Greetings again everyone, and it's time for another camera review thing. This time, a new full frame camera that could get photographers on a lower budget a little bit excited. Well, maybe. It took me a little while to really get what the new Canon EOS R8 was all about, but after using it for a while I think I've got the idea. It's like a more powerful Canon EOS RP, but a less powerful EOS R6 Mark II. Or for anyone else not geeky enough to know what I'm talking about, it's basically intended to be the star, low budget, full frame camera of Canon's new mirrorless system. Some people have called this thing the successor to the original EOS R camera, well maybe, although that one will always reside on a weird planet of its own, in my mind. For a decent full frame camera at one and a half thousand US dollars, the new EOS R8 is relatively affordable, although its UK price of £1700 is a lot more expensive, hopefully those UK prices might come down a little one day. I'd like to thank Canon very much for loaning me one for a week for testing, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The cheapest mirrorless full frame Canon camera around is the little EOS RP at only a thousand US dollars. It's tiny with excellent build quality, but its very old 26 megapixel sensor isn't actually very high quality. Its autofocus and feature set are fairly old school too and its video quality was unimpressive. Well, this new EOS R8 camera is also compact and lightweight, but features Canon's latest 24 megapixel full frame sensor, which is a considerable improvement in high ISO quality and dynamic range, and its images even look a little sharper to me in my tests. The new sensor also offers excellent 4K video quality up to 60 frames per second and using the entire sensor width in 8 or 10 bit footage and even with C-Log3 shooting for more serious video work. The camera starts to warm up when shooting in the more intensive video modes, but your battery will tend to run out before the camera overheats. The camera also features the excellent autofocus system of the much more expensive EOS R6 Mark II, thanks to its very powerful Digic X processor inside. Its autofocus is very fast, with a usual array of subject recognition modes that Canon's high-end cameras all enjoy, both recognising and tracking your subject fantastically well. Anyone upgrading from their older EOS RP camera will not want to go back. When it comes to burst rate, with the mechanical shutter, the camera can manage only a mediocre 6 frames per second, but in electronic shutter mode, it can handle an astonishing 40 frames per second, although the buffer of about 120 JPEG images will fill up quickly. Still shooters will be happy to see it can shoot exposures up to 1 4,000th of a second as 10-bit HDR PQ HEIF images, compressed and normal raw shooting modes, and it also has anti-flicker shooting and silent electronic shooting too. I also got good results from its in-camera HDR shooting mode, as you can see here. One of the biggest disadvantages of the R8 is its lack of in-body image stabilisation. Sony and Nikon's lower budget cameras both feature it, and it's something I really miss when working with a camera that doesn't have it. Anyway, those are some of the camera's key features. Let's take a look at its build quality. The top of the camera is fairly simply laid out, with nice, positive, on, off and still or video mode switches, although it would have been nice to see a locking button on a mode dial to keep from accidentally changing modes. At the rear we do get an AF on button, thankfully, but no autofocus selector joystick. On the sides of the camera we get a microphone input and headphone socket, very useful for video work. We also get micro HDMI and USB-C ports. There's no pop-up flash in this camera, but the hot shoe is multi-function, so with the right adapter you could even put XLR inputs on there for four-channel audio capture, as well as, of course, a flash gun. The fully articulated touchscreen is very responsive and intuitive to use, which beginner photographers who are perhaps more used to shooting with their phones will really appreciate. There's also a very handy advanced auto mode, which makes everything super easy for beginners, and similar to a smartphone interface, if that's the experience you want of course. You can see it at work here. Even seasoned photographers might find themselves having fun with it, monkeying around with various adjustments on the touchscreen, just like on an iPhone. The rear screen itself is bright and high resolution. The electronic viewfinder is a little smaller and lower resolution than Canon's top tier offerings, but still works absolutely fine. 
The camera uses Canon's pretty small LPE17 batteries, which only have enough power for about 300 shots or so, or a bit over an hour of 4K video shooting. You will definitely want to keep a spare handy on any long trips out. The camera has one SD card slot, which is a typical limitation for a lower budget option. Overall, the camera is well featured and has a solid, compact build, but the typical restrictions and cost cutting for a lower budget option are there. Of particular annoyance are the lack of in-body stabilisation, the small battery and the single card slot. Let's take a look at its still image quality now. This camera has Canon's latest 24 megapixel full frame sensor, straight from the more expensive EOS R6 Mark II, which has quickly gained a great reputation for itself. As you can see here, its raw images capture tons of fine detail, with all the usual nice Canon colours you come to expect. Impressively, the camera's JPEG images are almost as sharp, which used to be a weak point of older Canon cameras. This is definitely Canon's sharpest 24 megapixel sensor ever. Let's look at noise levels now. It's only really at ISO 1600 that even slight noise and loss of detail is becoming visible, which is a wonderful performance really. Let's push things a little further though. At ISO 3200, everything's still looking pretty good. It's only really at ISO 6400 that we are really beginning to lose detail. ISO 12800 is usable at a pinch, but any higher than that, especially 51200, and things really begin to fall apart. Still though, this is some of the best high ISO image quality I've seen to be honest, with even ISO 6400 retaining good detail and acceptable noise levels, so great job Canon, this is some of the best image quality you can get out of a lower budget camera full stop. Something else to praise is the camera's excellent dynamic range. This is where you'll see one of the biggest improvements over a camera with a smaller APS-C sized sensor, with shadows and highlights retaining loads of information here. Let's take a look at video quality now. This is 4K video at 25 frames per second. At ISO 100, the video quality is excellent, really detailed, with no noise or difficult artefacts. This is great stuff for a lower budget camera. The quality remains very good up to ISO 3200, although obviously a bit of noise is emerging here. Still, what a performance. It's at ISO 6400 that we are losing detail and getting some really noticeable noise. ISO 12800 is rough, but still just about usable, but ISO 25600 is pushing things too far. Still, this video footage is very detailed, with very low noise, even at high ISO levels, a bit of a dream come true on a lower budget camera. When it comes to rolling shutter, then shooting in 4K it is unfortunately pretty noticeable, so that's a real fly in the ointment, although, as is often the case, reduce the quality down to 1080p for much better results if you're shooting an action scene, for example. The camera also offers a high speed shooting mode up to 120 frames per second, which automatically slows your footage down for you in camera. I love the results here, because that 1080p footage still manages to remain very detailed. It looks lovely, unlike my hair on that particular day. While the camera doesn't have in-body stabilisation, it does have electronic stabilisation in video mode. It crops into your footage, of course, but if you're shooting with a very wide angle lens, like the RF 16mm, then it can be useful. The standard level of stabilisation helps, but the enhanced stabilisation is actually doing a great job here, I thought, so that'll be really helpful for vloggers on the move, I think. Overall then, well it's clear to me that in their approach to this low budget offering, Canon have decided to offer a camera with one of their best ever sensors, with excellent video and still image quality and a wonderful autofocus system, but they've chosen to compromise on build quality to get the cost down, with a lack of in-body stabilisation and autofocus joystick, only one card slot and a somewhat mediocre battery. Basically, it's an excellent images camera for anyone who doesn't do particularly strenuous photography, for serious hobbyists on a budget, or anyone else who happens to want that gorgeous 24 megapixel full frame sensor at an affordable price. Those who need 
Pro features will of course gravitate towards the R5 or R6 Mark II, but that doesn't stop the R8 being a great value offering which is much more capable in the right hands than its price tag might suggest. Thanks for watching everyone, I love putting these videos together although they're pretty time consuming, especially when I review a whole camera and not just a lens, so I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for, well, your support, which keeps this channel trucking on. Patreon supporters get all kinds of bonus and exclusive content, not to mention early access to some of my most interesting reviews, so check it out in the description below. Ciao for now everyone.